welcome to the the uh, what vlog number are we on? 13, 14. Uh, I wanted to do a little more topic specific one and dive into uh, nutrition with you guys and kind of just how I go about uh, managing what I eat in order to have success not only with uh, you know how my physique looks but <clears throat> how my physique performs and how I feel. Uh, so that's what we're going to get into today. So thanks for tuning back into another vlog. So today, macros, nutrition, calories, all that good stuff. Um, I eat a muffin every morning. I usually split it. I'll, I'll do half and my girlfriend will do the other half. And they're protein muffins. So one that helps me get in a little bit more protein during the day. I mean, it's 20 grams of muffin, so I'm getting 10 grams with the half. Um, but little tricks like that are nice because I feel like I'm eating something that's, I don't feel restricted with my diet, right? I'm, I'm able to get in little treats, even though they're still keeping me on point or they're within my, my plan for nutrition. You know, I feel like I have little meals and little snacks throughout the day that I can still look forward to. And that's important for me. And I think anybody setting up a, a diet, uh, that's sustainable because you want to be able to you know enjoy your food from time to time and look forward to it and not just drone through life eating you know the cold chicken and broccoli and rice i usually do this for breakfast i'll do half a protein muffin uh six eggs now i only do two egg yolks to cut down on the amount of fat that's in the eggs if i were to do six egg yolks it would um, double if not triple almost triple the calories um, and of course, triple the fat. So by doing mostly egg whites, I can eat a, a larger volume of eggs. The protein's higher because the egg whites contain protein. Uh, and then I'm keeping the fat lower as well. So that's a, that's a big win for me. And eggs have been a staple in my morning nutrition for years. And then uh, I'll try to get in some fruit. So usually I'll do a banana in the morning. Later points in the day, I'll do maybe a couple of blueberries mixed into some yogurt. A mango here or there um, just a little bit of variety and you know some natural fiber to kind of keep things moving is uh, is important to me excuse the construction so I try to get 30 to 40 grams roughly of protein in a meal some meals a little bit more uh, just so I end up with a total of uh, around 200 or 200 plus grams of protein a day now when it comes to figuring out how much protein to eat how many carbs fats the first step is to figure out what the heck your maintenance calories are. So what I do, or the equation I've used for that for myself and uh, for people I've helped for years now is uh, this right here. So this is, uh, if it's gonna focus on me, let's hope it does, there we go. So this is the Harris-Benedict equation. Uh, and it's pretty widely accepted, it takes into account your age, height, weight, activity level, uh, and from there, that's going to give you your, your maintenance calories. And once you use a, an activity multiplier to kind of gauge about how active you are, uh, just so you can compensate for, you know, moving around all day, uh, factor that into how many calories your body's burning. Then you have a, uh, then you have a pretty good idea of what your maintenance calories are. From there, you can either stick to those maintenance calories. Uh, you could go on a slight caloric surplus in order to bulk and put on a little bit of size, or you can go into a deficit to start cutting down a little bit. Now, once you decide on what you wanna do, then it's about converting that over to figuring out what the heck your macro should be. Now, there's different philosophies for what your percentage breakdown uh, should be. I'll, uh, I'll show you mine. 35% of my daily calories, I want protein, 20% from fat, and 45% uh, from the carbohydrates. And knowing with that, well, I'll keep it up there, when you know that you know there's four calories per gram in carbohydrate and protein and nine calories per gram of fat, uh, you can kind of do a little, uh, little math there and, and convert it out pretty easily. Now, I'm sure plenty of online calculators you could also use where you just type in your metrics and it'll spit it out. I, I'm a believer in uh, just kind of taking ownership of the process and 
making sure I understand why the numbers I'm following are the way they are. So that's why I like to, to break it down like that. Um, so once you have that, you're, you're set, right? Uh, now, if you're, if you're kind of new to things, but you want to cut, I like to uh, su subscribe to the philosophy of just try to stick with your maintenance for two weeks, right? Get your maintenance calories, you know, get your corresponding maintenance macros and just try to follow that for two weeks. Because if you're if you never track things and, you know, maybe you're adding some additional or new training, you know, this can get a little bit taxing, right? Um, your energy can be a little bit lower. You're probably recovering from, from new training. Uh, so I would just say just try to stick with it for two weeks. And once you get down, OK, I got the got the maintenance maintenance thing down, you know, I kind of have some foods that I like to eat. I'm kind of getting an understanding of what I'm eating. Then from there, okay, let's try, you know, four or 500 calorie deficit um, where you know, okay, I might be a little bit hungry by the end of the day, but I got my feet wet a little bit. So I think I'm ready for it. So that's what I like to recommend just to make things a little more uh, sustainable. Um, and that's it. And then the, the rest of it is like, you know, how, how do you want to balance it throughout your day? I don't, you know, I, I'm not big on, you know, in terms of like setting it up and following through week to week. I'm not big on meal prepping a bunch of stuff at a time. Now, I work with a company. It's the same company that does uh, these protein muffins. It's called Hummus Fit. They do meal prep, and that's how I found out about them. I had a, a buddy of mine actually, I think, live not too far from where they kind of opened up operations in New York. And he knew the owner and, you know, spoke real highly of him and what he was doing. And uh, he's like, okay, you got to try this. So I tried it and I'm like, all right, this is the best meal prep I've had. It actually has flavor and uh, the macros are still on point. So I've been using them on and off for the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, now that I work with them, I'm, I'm lucky I get to eat it every day. Uh, so if you want to check any of that stuff out, just for uh, ease of of tracking, you know, because all the macros are on the meals. Um, you can order ahead of time, plan out your week of meals a little bit more conveniently. Um, I have a link below and I'll put my code down there as well, uh, which will save you a little bit and helps out the channel. But with that said, you don't need that to be successful because when the majority of my time training, and I've mentioned this before on the vlog, there's no way I could have. <clears throat> There's no way I could have afforded that. For me alone, it's probably just upwards of $200 a week, um, which, you know, for me in the past was was just not going to be realistic. I could do it probably for half that if I if I budget right at the grocery store, uh, at least for the basics. But even doing it that way, the concept is still the same. It's still about, you know, keeping the protein high, uh, watching your carbohydrate intake, keeping the fats, you know, low to moderate and, and healthy fats getting in healthy fats in your diet. And some people like to write it all down. I think there's some good apps out there that help with speed uh, for that. So I personally enjoy Macro Factor. I've used my Fitness Pal macro tracker before. Um, I just like the kind of aesthetic of Macro Factor, to be honest, it's pretty clean to me. So that's what you guys see me using every day on my, uh, on my phone. That's not the icon for it, the one that's on there. I just kind of customize things to, to feed into my OCD just a little bit, but that's okay. Just like you could do with the meal prep, um, most of them have a barcode scanner built in. So if, you know, when you're cooking with something or portioning it out, those are kind of the two things you want to do. You can either scan the food or search it manually in the database, and then you're going to want to measure it out. So the, the thing you guys don't see me doing a lot, which I have, I just don't use is a food scale now this will come out from time to time when i'm i'm cooking and prepping um but because most of my meals are measured out and the things that aren't already measured i'm eating the same amount so they're easy for me to measure i don't need to use this as much uh, but in times when i do you know when i'm prepping meats and carbohydrates um, Vegetables, I usually just measure like vegetables and fruits. I'll just go by the cup. Um, but at, a lot of things I do end up weighing uh, the cooked amount. So whenever I'm tracking it, it's always 
like any meat, anything like that, I'll cook it and then I'll measure it. Uh, and then I'll make sure when I log it in the app, it's also logged as the cooked weight of things just to keep things easy, making sure I'm, uh, I'm tracking the right amounts on stuff. Um, but that's it. The, the rest is up to you with, with what you like to incorporate in your diet. You know, I kind of have some, uh, some staples I like to use in my diet. Um, if you hit me below in the comments, I can, I can send you guys some stuff. Um, as far as recommendations on foods, um, but it's you know it's more about what fits, what fits you, what you like doing. Because once you have your structure and you go, okay, these are my macros for the day. I'm not gonna you know ex exceed it. If I do buy a little bit here or there, that's fine. But I'm gonna try to get close to that every day. Man, it makes things fall in place a lot smoother. And then uh, you, know, you kind of see what works, what works for you, what keeps you full, what doesn't. You know, some foods like the muffin definitely make me crave more sweets. But I tell myself, hey, I'm just going to have half. And, you know, I look forward to eating something like that after fasted cardio in the morning. Um, so, you know, I use it as a bit of a reward. You know, obviously there's other foods I could replace that with that are going to keep me more full. But I'm not going to look forward to those after doing, you know, 30 minutes on the stairs. So the muffin, uh, the muffin does it for me. So, you know, you'll, you'll find your way once you, once you get into it, once you start. And then uh, I was actually talking with a buddy of mine, and he brought this up, and I think it's a good, uh, something worth noting, and maybe a good note to end on, which is not obsessing over it. So at the beginning, you know, it's something new. You might want to be a little more diligent with your tracking um, in terms of like, you know, being on your phone every meal, making sure, okay, how much am I eating, this and that, but you'll get a feel for it after a little while. And especially if you kind of find your staple meals, not a lot of things like day to day. I have variety or I have variety within a day, but day to day, there's not as much variety just because I kind of know what I like to eat. And if I want to put something new in, okay, I'll, you know, I'll track it and adjust accordingly. But I think it's healthy to not obsess over it. So for me, even though I track every meal that I eat, don't obsess over exactly a cup of fruit or you know, exactly this many ounces where I know, okay, this is gonna be close to what I need. I'm happy with that. Um, and additionally, I'm not on my phone 24 seven tracking everything I eat going, I gotta track it before I eat it. And, and you know, pulling up my phone all the time because it just, it becomes a distraction. It, become, it can become a burden pretty quickly. Uh, so what I do now, I usually pull my phone up in the morning just cause I'm filming with you guys. So then I'm, I'm tracking that first meal, but Realistically, if I weren't, I would probably just have my phone out just a couple times to track. Um, after my second meal, I would track my first and second meal or, you know, about halfway through the day. I would just track everything I ate for the first half of the day. And then just before my last meal, usually I grab my phone again and track, uh, you know, everything I've eaten between the last time I'm tracking and now. And then I go, okay, this is kind of what I have left. This is what I can eat in my last meal track that down so then I'm done for the day, got the log done, enjoy my last meal because I already know what it's going to be and, uh, and I'm smooth. That makes it so much easier, um, you know, because I understand you guys are busy too, you got other things going on, other important things to worry about um, outside of just counting the macros and the banana. I get it, um, you know, but health is important so it's about doing it in a way that, again, is... Uh, is uh, maintainable, you know, that's what, I've, that's what I've been able to do for myself. So hopefully there's some things in there that you guys can kind of uh, pick up as well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy the heck out of your weekend. Be safe. I will catch up with you Monday for our next vlog. And uh, that's how I track my macros. What do I know? I'm just Merck. Thanks for watching, guys.